Hello again, everyone, and thank you so much for joining us for this Monday's edition of Alaska Weather. I'm Dave Percy, a meteorologist with the National Weather Service, and I'll be hosting tonight's show. And on uh, the hazardous weather graphics, all three here, as you can see, are blank across the state, and that means there are no watches, warnings, or advisories uh, out anywhere, at least for the moment. And for the river breakup map, there are any watch, warnings, or advisories for uh, any type of ice jam flooding at all, the uh, Yukon here continuing to just slowly dissolve. In fact, a uh, lot of, in fact, the whole stretch down here is, has some open and, uh, or actually mostly open, and then back up here there is some open all the way to the Porcupine River, which is still pretty well iced in there, otherwise uh, unknown there along the Noatak River, but the uh, Kobuk River, uh, mostly ice, as well as the uh, Koyukuk River here mostly eyes until you get uh, down in the southern stretch there and it starts to open up to uh, some open areas to uh, actually mostly open as it extends on down to the Yukon. And from there, fire danger uh, did a recovery today or made it something of a comeback from what it was yesterday here over the uh, eastern interior due to the uh, sunshine temperatures rising 65 to 70. So drying it out a little bit there so it expanded it up especially along the uh, Yukon Porcupine Rivers all the way down across the 40 mile country in Upper Tanaw Valley and also that zone in here with the Copper River Basin and uh, that's probably going to uh, actually expand and increase here over the next couple of days as temperatures rise in the lower 70s tomorrow, lower to mid 70s tomorrow, maybe uh, anywhere from uh, 75 to maybe toward 80 on uh, Wednesday. And from there we'll look at satellite imagery, uh, got some loose high, mid high clouds really streaming through uh, southeast and northwest here through the east central interior areas and then uh, band here coming up along the north gulf coast a uh, little pressure in the gulf not much in the way of any precipitation with that Seward had one one hundredth of an inch in the last 12 hours and uh, that mostly just high clouds there above 12,000 feet and then it sort of cuts off here breaks out to some sunshine over the northern panhandle today where, seven, or where Haynes reached 70 degrees at 3 p.m. Then we've got some uh, Again, high clouds spreading into the southern southeast coast with uh, the uh, lower thicker clouds here back to the southeast with some precipitation and I'm now be heading that way later tonight. Out here in the west we've got a weak system coming across uh, the northwest bearing that dropped out of the Russian Far East and that has just started the precipitation here in the last hour at St. Paul and St. George. Uh, wind's not too bad, kicking up maybe gusts 25 miles an hour at the most with this system. And again, some light rain spreading eastward into the Pribilofs. Otherwise, uh, kind of showery for the Alaska Peninsula. Also, a band of showers here from Kodiak Island picked up about 15 hundredths of an inch of uh, rain with this zone right through there. On up toward the uh, western side of Iliam, the lake, about the same amount. And then some scattered showers here in northeast Bristol Bay. Although, uh, Togiak did pick up about a uh, tenth of an inch of rain and about a third of an inch over at Cape Newenham. Otherwise, uh, lighter amounts of the Alaska Peninsula, none at all out over the Aleutians. Up to the north there, not a lot going on on the Arctic coast. Uh, some clouds, light winds, and dry for the most part. Not even uh, too many areas of fog reported up there. On the chart today, surface high pressure, not all that strong, uh, but did result in dry conditions here, keeping this moisture kind of down to the south and sliding it off to the west-northwest there but really not anything too significant other than what I mentioned with some isolated showers right on out maybe toward Nunavak Island, very continuing to weaken low here just southwest of Cape Nuanam, some showers through the Alaska Peninsula, and then the partly mostly sunny skies over the northern panhandle, a little more cloudy down to the south but still dry, and then the uh, sunshine increases as you head over toward the eastern interior with uh, Eagle reaching 67 this afternoon, and uh, lower to mid-60s westward here into the central interior. And the forecast for tonight looks like a few lingering showers here, that weak trough, leftover showers 
uh, less though for Kodiak Island, but uh, it could be an isolated shower with the southern Kenai Peninsula back up to uh, areas from Kamishak Bay and to the western Alaska Range, and that's about it. Otherwise, dry with uh, mostly clear skies here in the eastern interior, and uh, risk of some showers develops over the southern southeast coast with a little more clouds. You won't have any change at all up to the north there. And this uh, band of uh, very light precipitation, low clouds, fog, and drizzle will be about summing it up here without a uh, weak warm front. Uh, so look for a uh, kind of an IFR night, warm front type weather there for the Pribilofs. It'll slide on down, maybe reaching the eastern Aleutians and possibly false pass. High pressure here, dry conditions, light winds. Uh, risk of some clearing there for the Adak Atka area, and uh, I don't think those the showers out there towards Chimney will be more missed than hit. And moving on to tomorrow, still have this weak trough here, right over the uh, well from the uh, nor eastern Norton Sound to Lotto Hills, right down to the Alaska Range. Could see a few uh, showers, uh, extreme western Cook Inlet, mostly back toward the mountains there, and again back to the northwest, and then some little bit of clearing behind that. So it could be a partly to mostly sunny day, at least in part for Togiak, Dillingham, the King Salmon. Definitely drier and more sunshine for Kodiak tomorrow. And variable clouds here, south central Alaska, dry conditions, light winds, warmer, high 65 to 75 here north of the Alaska Range. We're actually from the Copper River Basin all the way up to the southern slopes of the Brooks Range here on the east side. And this uh, first impulse here coming northward, uh, that's going to keep a chance of showers from, say, Petersburg over toward the east there, Petersburg southward toward Haines and uh, Stewart, or no, not Haines, Stewart and Hyder. Haines will be dry tomorrow with partly sunny skies, and then a little bit more moisture now edging its way northward across Dixon Entrance. So moving on to Wednesday, we'll see that uh, front does kind of parallel the coastline here and spread increase the chances of rain tomorrow night and through Thursday along the coast, uh, even up to the north now, you can see some showers all the way up along the uh, Klondike Highway to Skagway. Periods of light rain at times here for the North Gulf Coast, uh, spreading westward. Uh, definitely reaching, uh, say, Whittier and probably Portage as well, Girdwood. Whether it jumps the Chugach, uh, I wouldn't count on it at this point in time, so it'll stay dry for Cook Inlet. But it'll be more of a cloudy day. And again, northern interior there under upper high pressure and sunshine. Again, uh, temperatures well into the 70s, most areas, right up until you get to the Brooks Range. It'll be a little cooler out toward the Arctic coast, coast of course. And this front uh, wraparound moisture brings just a slight chance of rain to Kodiak Island on the east side there, Kodiak State Airport. Ozinki in those areas in the afternoon be right on the edge though. Sunshine, better chance of sunshine at Akiok and, uh, than there will be at Kodiak. And not too bad for King Salmon, Northeast Bristol Bay. Isolated showers, mostly cloudy skies from the Bering Sea or in the Pribilofs right into the uh, Yukon Delta, maybe Cuscoom Delta along the coast. Risk of a thunderstorm here over the uh, uh, western interior areas, just a slight chance, otherwise low clouds, fog, and drizzle, bearing straight right on down to the eastern Aleutians, and this front sort of uh, sliding south of the Adak Atka area, but close enough to bring a slight chance of rain into the Adak area, whatever falls will be light, bear chances out to the west. And for the lows tonight, looks like uh, lower to mid-20s here for the North Slope and the Arctic Coast, with uh, lows in the upper 30s to lower 40s for the eastern interior. Chillier, a little below freezing here out over the uh, St. Lawrence Island area, Shishmaref to about Point Hope, and uh, lower 30s, Pribilof, southwest coast, and the Aleutians in the 30s, with uh, 30s here to lower 40s, south central Alaska, 30 35, Copper River Basin, 35 to 43 for the southeast coast highs. On Tuesday afternoon, 65 to 75, as I mentioned here over the eastern central interior. 40s back to the west, only 34 for St. Lawrence Island, near freezing for the Arctic coast, and 50s to mid-60s for the Panhandle. Lows the following morning, a little milder now, 40 to 45 in the Tana Valley there, with upper 30s up toward Fort Yukon, then uh, upper 20s, Brooks Range, and mid-20s for the Arctic coast. For the afternoon highs, shaping up like this, again, warmer. Fairbanks there, they've got the 76, so uh, when it gets that... Uh, up there, I wouldn't be surprised if somebody was uh, pushing 80 in those areas in the afternoon. Uh, nice for the Copper River Basin, 65 to 70 for the highs. Susitna Valley, 60 to 68 for the highs, uh, all the way down the western Kenai Peninsula. And in the 50s for the southeast coast. And now, aviation weather around Alaska. 
Moving on to flying weather. Uh, batch IFR, pretty uh, long fetch here from the southwest coast, St. Lawrence Island, all the way back into the west central Aleutians. Marginal VFR here right into the southwest interior and almost into western Cook Inlet, uh, definitely into the central southern Cusquam Valley, but VFR in the north or through the central interior, Copper River Basin, Kenai Peninsula, right on down the southeast coast. Afternoon tomorrow, uh, maybe a little bit of marginal VFR may develop here. Uh, Petersburg to Wrangell, uh, possibly, otherwise VFR, Gulf of Alaska VFR, Kodiak, Bristol Bay, northward, all the interior until you get north of the Brooks Range, then you hit some marginal to eventually IFR, and this area IFR here right along the Yukon Delta coast from the Bering Strait on back to the southwest, uh, otherwise marginal for the central eastern Aleutians. And next day, Wednesday morning, uh, IFR back in over the uh, north slope, especially central and western portions, and much of the Arctic coast. And extends down through the strait to, a, again, a huge area IFR here over the central and western bearing. Uh, off to the east here and southeast, we're looking uh, pretty marginal, some of that getting inland a ways, and across the uh, deltas. Good VFR over the interior again, down into the Gulf of Alaska, Kodiak, and now some uh, marginal or IFR making its way onto the uh, southeast coast here and uh, on the uh, southern part of the southeast coast, with marginal VFR farther up to the north, Lincoln Isle Glacier Bay staying VFR. And then for the afternoon, uh, just some scattered areas of marginal VFR over the inside waters here. And the main area of marginal conditions is just along or off the coast. But Gulf of Alaska now, marginal VFR into Prince William Sound, moisture coming in from the southeast, in southeast flow there. So that'll be uh, lowering the conditions on the eastern slopes of the western Alaska range. IFR, central Arctic coast north slope, back and around down through the strait, and kind of the same pattern here. A lot of IFR over the central western bearing. This will extend down to the west central Aleutians. Marginal VFR off to the southeast. And for passes, Anatovic, VFR tomorrow. Same forecast for Adigan, good VFR. Uh, probably some clouds, but uh, of the VFR variety. Lake Clark and Merrill could start, uh, probably will start out marginal and then improve to VFR conditions. And that same trend holds for rainy and windy. VFR, Isabel looking good, VFR, uh, Bentasta and uh, uh, Tanita, all ceilings, visibility is unlimited, and for portage as well, good VFR, Chilkoot and White, uh, VFR. Freezing levels, about 6,000 feet here from British Columbia in the northern panhandle, right on up into the eastern interior, uh, supporting those temperatures pushing up into the 70s, and we've got a little bit of a cool pocket there, Dixon entrance catching the southern southeast coast. 4,000 feet falls to 2,000 out toward the southwest coast and uh, kind of a cool area right through here and then pops back up to 6,000 feet over the western Bering Sea. Icing, uh, really nothing significant. A chance of some light to very isolated moderate rime or mixed icing here. Seward Peninsula into Norton Sound, a little ways into the uh, mid and lower Yukon River Delta there, or actually in the mid river there. And then this area kind of slipping up northward with that system that would touch off that marginal VFR condition I spoke of here over the east, or Petersburg to Wrangell. Well, that could be some, maybe a chance, slight chance of some uh, rime icing or mixed icing associated with that above about 6,000 feet or so. And onto the jet stream, well to the south of the entire forecast area, we do have this northwest flow coming down around a weak upper, uh, upper low there over the Yukon Delta, about 60 knots, otherwise upper high pressure extending from uh, ridging right up through here with another center over the eastern interior there, and uh, warming temperatures by the day over the east side, and for 9,000 feet, uh, weak low here on the southwest coast, another one back farther to the northwest, Southeast flow here, anywhere from 10 to maybe 20 knots, uh, 10 to 15 sums it up better, but uh, not too strong. Really light down here over southern Alaska, Alaska Peninsula, Kodiak, light winds, and it's starting to pick up a little bit, but not too much over the far western Aleutians. Maybe 20 knots, 10 to 20 for the Panhandle, 3,000 feet, same pattern, 5 to 15 for the southeast coast, Gulf of Alaska, right on up over interior Alaska, light westerlies out over the Aleutians, and also uh, starting to pick up way out over the uh, Shimia 2 area in the afternoon. Turbulence, the only area here up over the northeast. Uh, could be some very light to isolated moderate shop there in and around the uh, south side of the southeastern Brooks Range zone. Otherwise, that's about it uh, uh, turbulence wise. And after the marine forecast, or after the break, I'll be back with the marine forecast. 
Hello again, I'm meteorologist Dave Snyder with the National Weather Service for another edition of Alaska Weather Facts. And joining us again, talking about the augmented reality sandbox, is Eric Stevens from GINA, the Geographic Information Network of Alaska. And he's actually talking about a project from EPSCOR, which is the Experimental Program to Stimulate Competitive Research. A lot of acronyms, but some really mm -hmm. fun stuff today, right, Eric? You bet. We've got a learning tool that is a tool that's fun to use, uh -huh. and it really has a, a relevance to actually daily lives of anyone who goes outside uh -huh. and sees uh, lumpy topography in Alaska. We've got yes. a lot of mountains and such. You know, when I was younger and go on your first hike in the hills, say, yeah. you're given, maybe you're in the Boy Scouts, or, or you get at the kiosk at, a, at the trailhead, a topographic map, a flat piece of paper yes. with all these lines on it, bullseyes, uh, long lines that curve back mm -hmm. on themselves, say, perhaps things that look like this. Mm -hmm. Um, a, a quadrangle or a topographic map. We've got here just to illustrate a couple of examples near Denali. Alaska okay. has so much Perfect topography, example. so many mountains. Yeah. And what are all these lines that we see? It can be tough mm -hmm. to know what this means the oh, first yeah. time you look at it. What we've got, all these lines represent lines of where the, uh, the elevation of the topography goes through a certain level above sea level, say. Mm -hmm. that This line represents where the mountains have gone from below 1,000 feet mean sea level up through a thousand feet and above. That's your thousand foot contour. And when the mountain keeps going up, mm -hmm. you're up to 1,200 feet, 1,400 feet, and so on. And that's how you get this little bullseye around, around the peak of a mountain. Kind of makes layered slices, right? Kind of like layered slices. Okay. Nice way yeah. to look yeah. at that. And when you see those, the lines are closer together, you're, you're going up more steeply. Okay. If the mountain rises more slowly, it takes you longer in horizontal space to go through those different vertical increments. So that is that, really hard to visualize. Right. We're, Imagine you're looking at a 2D piece of paper, two-dimensional yeah. piece of paper, but you're trying to understand what it, the three-dimensional world looks yeah. like. Yeah. Well, enter the help. augmented reality I like sandbox. It. Okay. Yes, what is that? Yeah. It is right here. We have the sandbox with us today, Sandbox 2.0, portable version. Sweet. Built up at University of Alaska Fairbanks. And we've got a couple of folks helping out today. Yeah, uh, let's see, Alana Velaji, and she's a uh, mechanical engineering student from the University of Alaska Fairbanks. If you want to give us a thumbs up there, Alana, thanks for helping us out today. And Courtney Brees, she's the outreach coordinator from EPSCOR, also helping us out today. Thanks, Courtney. And this tool here has a Microsoft Connect um, to sense the level of sand in this sandbox. Oh, wow. And then the that. Connect feeds its information into a computer that then sends a signal to a projector okay. to draw the appropriate topographic lines on this topography. The fun thing about this, as we can see here, wow, that. is that the sandbox and its Connect and its projector, they all work as a team. Hmm. So here we've got a mountain in the middle of the, of the uh, sandbox. What if we uh, took down the mountain to some degree Watch as the, uh, the software responds and redraws the topography. Mm, kind of a caldera forming there. There you go, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and what's fun about the sandbox too is it knows that uh, gravity flows downhill okay. and we've got some water that's actually down in the lowest elevations. And what's happening now is we're making it rain a little bit. We'll fill up rain oh, wow. into that uh, elevated lake bed, that caldera, as you uh -huh. said. And so now water is pooled up there. And if, what if you gouged out an outlet uh -oh. channel? Glacial dam release. There you go. The water flows out. What we're seeing here is a tool mm. that allows people to touch and connect Microsoft Connect, right. RRR, yeah. um, to connect two-dimensional topographic maps like what we have here, these flat things on a piece, wow. on a piece of paper, to the real three-dimensional world. I mm -hmm. think this sandbox, it's sandbox's real particular application as a learning tool to young people is what does a two-dimensional map mean when it's trying to represent the three-dimensional world? Right. This sandbox is kind of both at once. It's actually three-dimensional, uh -huh. uh, lumpy topography there, the sand but it's got these lines drawn on the three-dimensional sand that would be on a two-dimensional right, piece right. of paper. Wow, that, I mean, that, that is a huge leap from the learning that we experienced when we were younger to how, mm -hmm. how children and even adults are visualizing in, in these new forms of technology it allows that to kind of reshape their thinking and visualize this in a, in a very useful and absolutely hands-on way. It's, 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 it's a hands-on tool. and It's hard for me to sit here and not go play with that. <laughs> well, that's what happened at GINA, um, up at the University of Alaska in Fairbanks, when the first model was being mm -hmm. made, the prototype with right. plywood and such, we had professional adult 
<laughs> professor types had heard about this and they yeah. came by because they wanted to see how it worked. Okay. And, and everyone becomes uh, that idealistic, wonder-filled youngster. Sure. And, and you, you just can't help but play with that and to see how it reacts in time and, and um, right. it, it's a dynamic learning tool. And it Dynamic. responds. That's exactly. That's exactly mm -hmm. the word. Yeah. And you know, you wonder okay. what applicabilities beyond a teaching right. tool for Where topography it can it have? You can see how in Alaska we have inundation mapping is an okay. issue. If you had water coastal slosh, mm -hmm. slosh inland, say in a coastal flooding event right. on the western coast of Alaska or mm -hmm. the Arctic coast, you could see this. The concept is illustrated here um, as an introductory learning method. I think this is a potentially good outreach tool for all of us in Alaska. Okay, so not only just a topographical sense, a, a mapping sense, maybe something that leads into understanding of how geographic information systems work with GIS, but mm -hmm. also geology, if we wanted to get into kind of the formations and the bigger land masses and, and the representation of the 2D map, uh, we could go into hydrology, uh, which is uh, very important in Alaska, of course. Um, and even just understanding the weather sense, mounding up a big pile of sand could be that Arctic high pressure system sitting on top of Fairbanks and the voids mm -hmm. would be low pressure systems. This can go a lot of different directions. Mm -hmm. Yes, wow. exactly. It's uh, not just landforms, but pressure has contours of high pressure and low pressure. And I wish I had had this kind of a learning tool no when I was taking kidding. Meteorology 101 back 25 years oh, ago. Wow. It would have been helpful, I think. Probably would have gotten a better grade. Yeah. <laughs> okay, thank you so much for coming by, Eric and Alana and Courtney. Thank you so much for your help there in the sandbox. We are going to play in the sandbox a little bit more coming up tomorrow on our next edition of Alaska Weather Facts. We hope you join us for that. In the meantime, make sure you go to alaska.edu slash E-P-S-C-O-R. That's alaska.edu. EPSCOR to learn more information about what we're doing with this augmented reality sandbox around Alaska. We'll see you next time on Alaska Weather Packs. And now, marine weather around Alaska. Welcome back to the ACI Ice Analysis. Uh, now just a little bit of uh, thinner ice now north of St. Lawrence Island right through the Bering Strait, uh, so that's about ready to go south of the Strait now, and an, an ever-expanding open area here uh, from the, uh, well, off the north of the Seward Peninsula up around the Cape Lisburn Point Hope area, and then this zone continuing to thin out. And for the coastal water forecast, uh, east winds 15 to 20 knots there on the southern coast of the Panhandle, east, or variable 10 for the north coast, sees uh, 5 feet in the north, 6 feet in the south, south 20 knots, Lynn Canal, and kind of a light variable wind pattern here over the central and southern inside waters with two foot seas. And then for the uh, day on Wednesday, small craft advisories now with that uh, weakening front coming up toward the coast. Southeast 25 knots, fall back about 20 knots on the extreme north coast. Really light winds for Lynn Canal, five knots and Stevens Passage uh, east at 10, 20 knots from the southeast for Clarence Strait with four foot seas. Prince William Sound, uh, variable to north winds at about 10 knots tomorrow. Northwest 10 to 15 here for the North Gulf Coast and the Barren Islands, northwest 15. Uh, Kachemak Bay, east winds uh, 15 knots, otherwise, no, uh, I'm sorry, west winds at 15 knots with northwest dilly breezes at about 10 knots for Cook Inlet. And uh, following day, not much change in the wind speeds. The direction does a 180 there and goes to southeast at 10 knots with seas just one to two feet here in the inlet. Northwest 20 for Kamishak Bay and 15 knots out of the northwest for the Barren Islands. Eastern North Gulf Coast, uh, east winds at 20 knots and southeast at about 10 for Prince William Sound. Kodiak Island, westerly Shilakoff Strait turn northwest at 10 here on the east side of the island with uh, two to five foot seas. Sitkanak to Cape Sarachev, we got northwest winds at 15 with five foot seas and southwest 15 on the Bering Sea side of the peninsula and light westerlies there for Bristol Bay. Southwest at 10 for the bay on Wednesday and northeast at 10 here for the uh, Bering Sea side of the peninsula, northwest 10 Pacific side, Castle Cape all the way up the east side of Kodiak, northwest winds at 15 knots with four foot seas and west 15 for Shelikoff Strait. Uh, Eastern Aleutians, tomorrow westerlies 15 to 20 knots become a little more uh, variable on the direction and then southeast 15 to 20 by the time you get to Adak and Atka. And then we've got small craft advisory winds out here with that uh, front off to the southwest uh, kicking them up to 25 knots in the afternoon with uh, seas building 7 to 8 feet. And that holds through Wednesday, easterlies 25 knots, so small craft advisories areas west of Adak to Attu Island. 
and Northwest 2025 for ADAC and ATCA, and Unmac Island East 20 to 25, Unalaska Island lighter winds there, Northeast at 10 to 15. And for the Southwest Coast tomorrow, southerly winds at uh, 10 to 15 knots here, uh, 15 knots south of Nunavik Island, a little lighter to the north. West winds at uh, 20 knots there for the Perloffs, West 15, St. Matthew Island. East winds in Norton Sound at 10, turn northeast across the uh, St. Lawrence Island area with seas running about four feet. And a little breezier, but not too bad there. St. Lawrence Island kicks up about 20 knots from the north. Northeast of 10 here for the southwest coast. Uh, seas not too bad, three to four feet. East of 10 for the Perbloffs and north 15 for the St. Matthew Island zone. And we've got a brisk wind advisory tomorrow here for the eastern Beaufort Sea coast for 25 knot winds. And uh, pulling west of there, it drops down to 20 knots all the way out to the west side here to about Point Lay or a little southwest. And then from uh, areas Cape Beaufort all the way down to Wales, east-northeast winds at 10. Moving on to Wednesday, northerly winds 10 to 15 knots here from Wales up to Cape Beaufort. And then easterlies at 20 for the western and central Arctic coast. And brisk wind advisories are now for the entire stretch of the eastern Boulevard Sea Coast, 25 to 30 knot winds right out of the east. Looking at tonight's weather again, uh, isolated showers possible here over the extreme southern southeast coast, otherwise uh, losing the clouds, say midway northward there. And pretty nice over the eastern interior, not bad south central Alaska. Some lingering isolated or scattered, widely scattered isolated showers, Fognac Island, the western Alaska range, and dry for the uh, Cuscombe Valley up into the uh, Kobuk and Oatak Valley areas, Kotzebue, Seward Peninsula, not bad, isolated showers along the coast here. And then light rain, fog, and drizzle, and IFR conditions with this warm front moisture moving into the Pribloffs, possibly dropping down to the eastern Aleutians. And for tomorrow, that really washes out, just leaves some drizzle behind. Highs in the uh, 70s for the eastern interior over the next couple of days, while this system brings more rain to the North Gulf Coast. These forecasts are for planning purposes only. Call 1-800-WX-BRIEF for a formal pre-flight briefing. Always file a flight plan before you go fly. The U.S. Coast Guard Auxiliary urges you to leave a float plan with a friend or the harbormaster before you go boating.